Hey guys, I'm super tired this evening. Uh, and what I really want is a cup of coffee, but uh, I just worked, you know, a nine or nine and a half hour shift. And I was going to wait till the weekend and, and whatnot to show you this, but um, I just decided, you know, I really want to open it up. So I'm just going to suck it up. And instead of having a coffee, I'm going to have a uh, smash beer here. This is my pale two-row smash beer, which I will link up in the uh, corner to the video. You know, if you can't have coffee, might as well have a beer. So this is my new toy. Oh, well, by the way, welcome to Northwest Small Batch Brewing. I'm Steven. If you haven't been here before, uh, I do a video every week. Something to do with beer, brewing, uh, sometimes it's cider, sometimes it's meat, sometimes it's wine. Most often it's, it's beer. Um, and about once a month I do a full like brewing video from start to end, as they say, grain to glass. So this is a new fermenter that I ordered um, called from, uh, from Zilla. Um, if you're an avid YouTube, you know, beer video watcher. Is that a thing? That doesn't sound right. Uh, yeah, you know, did I say I worked nine and a half hours today already? Um, you might have already seen this out there. It's not like it's something that is that brand new of a product or anything. Um, it is a, well, you can see it says right on it. Uh, I'll tell you what it says. Uh, by the way, it's, it's about, uh, eight gallons, uh, 30 liters, which is about eight gallons is what it holds. So large opening. Yeah, that's great. Blah, blah. Uh, new body design, eh, whatever, uh, compact. Eh, none of this stuff matters to me. Pressure rated. There it is. So that's the first thing. This is a pressure rated, um, fermenter. What does that mean? It means instead of putting an airlock on your fermenter and letting all the gas escape, you put a different kind of device on there instead of an airlock. And then you can actually set it to hold a certain amount of pressure, just like if you had it on a keg, you know, serving your beer. And it will, re re it will ferment under pressure and it actually will finish that when it's all done and said and done it will actually be carbonated within the fermenter there's a few reasons why i decided to do this i'm going to start opening this while i explain um so one of the reasons is because um when you ferment under pressure it re it suppress suppresses a lot of the off flavors that can happen with yeast um, so that's one reason it helps with that, especially like, you know, I don't have air conditioning as I've noted before in other videos. So in the summertime, it gets warm here and I've been looking for an economical way to do, um, beer in the summer and not have to worry so much about the yeast, you know, getting angry at the hot weather. This will help. Um, but I'll be honest with you. I really am trying to think of uh, a way that I can, um, Probably I'm going to get something. I'm not going to t tell you yet because uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. Uh, depends on finances and that sort of thing. Uh, it's got a picture of the fermenter on the box and it tells you some different things. The lid has multiple. Yeah, the lid has multiple accessories. So like in the picture here, they've got, um, well, I'll show you the lid, but basically it, it's made to be able to, you can actually use this as a keg. That's another reason why I bought this. Um, I'm just looking to what else it says. Yeah, it says right here, pressure rated, use it like a fermenter and a keg. So in other words, you could literally ferment your beer in this under pressure, move it to the refrigerator, your kegerator, hook it up to your CO2. And as soon as it's cold, it's already going to be carbonated and ready to drink. Now I will say, uh, I hope I'm not like making a tremendous amount of noise with my microphone while I open this. Apologize if the sound isn't good. I, I can't obviously tell until I listen back to the video. Uh, I, I was talking about how you can put it in the, in, the, in the refrigerator and use it as a keg and drink it right away. You can, but if you've done a, any amount of home brewing, you know that beer is not something to be rushed. 
as soon as you rush it, it goes downhill quickly. Uh, and so I've mentioned this channel before. There's a, another brewer that I like to watch, Sarah Flora Brewing. And she made a statement that I agree with 100%, which, which is that she really doesn't like to drink a beer that's less than at least one month old. Now, I let my beer ferment for an entire month before I even uh, do anything with it. But, um, yeah. Um, so what I would do is ferment this like I normally would for a month. Um, that helps to make sure that the yeast pulls any off flavors back out and that sort of thing. And then... Um, I will probably, even, even though it would be drinkable right away, I would probably wait a week while it cold crashes and finishes, you know, clearing before I try to start drinking it. So I don't know that it's, for me, just for my style, uh, I don't think I would drink the beer fat any sooner. Uh, but I like the idea of not having to transfer it to a, a keg. Uh, I can just take it right from the fermenter. And also, I like the fact that it's see-through. Uh, I'll show it to you again in a second here. Uh, this is just the base, obviously, the stand that it sits on. Um, but being clear, you can see through it. So if it's in your kegerator, you can tell just by opening and looking how much beer is left in it. So you know, you know, if you're getting close to finishing it. I don't know what all this is. Uh, it's a handle, metal pieces to, to put together for a handle. We'll get there, won't we? All right, well, let's take this uh, baby killer off of here. You know what I'm talking about, right? There's always some kind of warning in these things with plastic bags that say it's not a toy, that it can suffocate you, blah, blah, blah. All right. So you're starting to get the idea here, right? I must be making so much noise, <laughs> Scrunch, scrunching things up and all. Uh, good Lord, there's a giant warning right on the front here. Maximum pressure, two and a quarter bar or 35 PSI. Yeah, so this is not gonna be one of those things that you'd wanna crank up to 30 PSI and shake to force carb. Um, it is um, a plasticky kind of material. In fact, there's a little bump here in it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to push that out or not. It's probably not a big deal. In fact, I'm wondering if there's another similar bump on the other side or if it's just, no, I think it's just, it is what it is. Let me, uh, God, there's another warning on the top here. All these warnings. Eh, it doesn't really push out. Well, it did a little bit, I guess, but yeah, there's so, okay. Okay. Let's see what the warning on the front says. Uh, besides the, so the, the, the pressure it's talking about. So yeah, you don't, you don't want to go uh, really over 30 PSI on these. And honestly, from what I understand, and I've never pressure fermented, so this is going to be a fun thing to try, but my understanding from just reading about it is you generally want to, don't want to go about over 10 PSI when you're fermenting. Uh, and the reason that I've been hearing is that yeast generally start to get angry and don't appreciate being fermented under higher pressure than that. So I mean, I don't know. I've never tried it. You'd have to have to experiment and see, see if that's true. But yeah, that's what I've heard. Also, um, another, another benefit to pressure fermenting is that um, it, re it not only does it sort of subdue uh, off flavors, it also um, kind of eliminates or, or, or severely limits the Kreuzen line that you would normally get across the top. So it doesn't really, you know how beer, as opposed to like wines and meads, beer tends to be explosive. Like it, it just, sometimes you need a blow off tube and stuff. With a pressure fermentation, that shouldn't be a problem. So liquid, that's weird. So liquid, keep it below 130 Fahrenheit, 55 Celsius. Ambient, so the, the air temperature around it should be lower than that. It says uh, a 95 Fahrenheit, 35 C. So if, if it's like a 100 degree day, I suppose they're saying don't use it. But I would think if you keep it out of the sun, what are you going to do? I mean, even if it's 
at least for me, if it's over 95 degrees, I mean, this is still going to be sitting around in my closet or something somewhere, right? So, I don't know. Maybe, I think pressure has something to do with it. So I guess it's saying, you know, if you're having it under pressure, that's going to be a problem with that kind of heat. So that's important. That's, that's, that's good. That's important. Um, so this is nice. I mean, you can actually put your hand down in there. So if you're wanting to clean it, you know, you can reach the bottom. It has a little bit of a dimple on the bottom, but it's pretty flat. It's obviously from manufacturing. So that's, I don't think that's by design. There's something printed on the back. Not to mention a little, like it's been used. There's like a kind of goop or something. It's on the outside of this, but that's kind of weird. Um, test this container or do not use under pressure after 2023. And then of course it, it, it tells you what we've already read that the maximum pressure rating is 35 PSI. Uh, so it means it's only guaranteed to hold pressure up until 2023. This is 2022 folks. So that's a one year away. Now I did read that, um, these, you know, supposed to, you're supposed to replace these every uh, two years. So probably this one's been sitting in a warehouse. That's why it says it's only good for one year. I have a feeling it'll be usable for a lot longer, a lot longer. At least I'm hoping. Um, you can buy just the actual vessel itself here without the other accoutrements for less money. But um, now you might be asking, well, why not just ferment in a, in a keg, right? A corny keg. And the answer is you can, you absolutely can. Um, well, that's annoying. That sticker's on one side and it's got this printout on this side. I'll just do it sideways here. That's annoying. Yeah, you can use a keg to ferment. The problem being is kegs only go to five gallons, like normal Cornelius kegs only hold five gallons. So if, you know, for serving, that's fine. But for fermenting, that's a problem because the aforementioned uh, croissant that's going to be explosive, if you fill that keg up to the top and then you were to ferment it, it's got to go somewhere and it's going to shoot out, uh, you know, you're, you're, it's just, you wouldn't be able to do it under pressure. So you'd have to do like a four gallon probably batch if you're using a five gallon keg just to be safe. Um, they do sell kegs that are larger though. Uh, they, they're called torpedo kegs. Uh, I think they're kind of on the expensive side. Uh, but you know, they hold, gosh, I, I'm not even going to say what it is because I'm not sure, but I know it's more than five gallons. So if you had one of those, it would be a lot easier. But then my question would be, will it fit in my kegerator? Cause you know, the, I have a mini sort of fridge type of kegerator. Anyway, back to this thing. So my understanding is you want to put a level on the top of this to make sure it's perfectly level. And then you can stick this on and you know, it's annoying. You're going to have to like put the water in and measure. What do we have here? So 30 liters are on the right side, gallons on the left, I guess. Uh, yeah, you have to just, you got to figure it out yourself. That's too bad, but not that big a deal. That's fine. Good. Great. Oh, look, there's also a little stick on thermometer. I don't really ever, um, I'm not sure how accurate these are. <laughs> actually, right now it's saying 68 degrees or 20 Celsius, which is actually what I keep my house at. So yeah, maybe it's pretty accurate. So we'll put that on there. So what's the warning here on the lid? Read the instructions before you use. What? Come on, what guy ever reads the instructions before doing anything? We just do it, we break it, and then we have to fix something on it, right? Uh, do not use this product before downloading and reading the instructions. Mm -hmm. By the way, these kegs, uh, I got this on more beer, and I'll put a link uh, in the description. Um, but if you are not in the United States, they're actually not, these kegs are actually not from the United States. Um, More Beer just happens to be a distributor for them. Uh, it's actually from Kegland, which is an Australian um, company. So if you're in Australia, and look, 
I get another one of these. <laughs> I already have like a million. That's why I'm laughing. No big deal. I mean, but yeah. Anyway, uh, these are nice though. I mean, I like the three piece airlocks. Uh, they're easy to clean because you can take them apart and you can get in there and clean them. The uh, S style are not as easy to clean. So the lid. Um, I'm just looking to see. So there's not, well, I guess there is. There's a, a little, like a round um, O-ring on this. Interesting. I wonder if it's one of those kinds of O-rings. I may, I may look at buying a... Um, so like for my keg, oh, I can feel there's a little bit of keg lube on it too. Uh, my, you know, I have, I'm wondering if this was used. There's a spot on here that has, looks like it's dirty. There's like a little bit of uh, keg lube on the um, ring. I don't know. Makes me wonder. Anyway. Um, yeah. So... I might buy, I think they sell these little kits where they, they'll they sell you like um, another set of, of um, rings. Because, you know, the one thing you don't want is to end up trying to brew and then have the ring fail and not be able to hold pressure and not have a backup ready. Uh, so this is very similar or pretty much almost exactly the same as a, a regular keg lid that you'd have for your keg. This one, in the, this piece in the middle, if you pull it, it's a, a pressure release. It's an emergency release. So, I mean, technically, it should be, like, built so that if you get over 30 PSI, which is what this is rated to, or 35, it'll release and let the pressure release. I don't know if, it, if it'll work. What else is weird is that there's a cap on one of these, and there's really, I guess there's a cap on this one, but it has a hole in it. Um, this looks weird to me. How, oh, okay. Maybe that's for the air, uh, for this, for the, um, oh, it's rubberized. You li I can literally push that in, and of course, this just goes here. And you can just use it as a normal fermenter. Um, what is this? Just a hole. Just a hole. It's a hoe in my lid. Well, I mean, all that makes sense. I don't know. How's this? How's this? Uh, oh. So I'll put it on after maybe. I don't want to take up all the time on the video, but the hand, there's a handle that goes around the lid here underneath the lip. Um, it's a metal ring on here too. So that you can pick up, I guess, you know, the thing with the handle, by the handles to help you lift it. And also, in case you hadn't noticed, once you're done rinsing it out and cleaning it, sanitizing it, you can just turn it over in its own stand and let it drain. So that's kind of cool. This here should be, boy, a lot of uh, packing material. No. Um, wow, they sure did pack these good. Oh, that's nice, though. That's good. That's a good sign. Sometimes, you know, you get stuff that you feel like they didn't really take any care. And I like those giant, like that one's got some really stiff bubble wrap, so I can reuse that for other things. So that's good. That's good. Uh, this is, oh, 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 okay. I was thinking it was a different lid. For some reason in my mind, in my mind, it was a different lid, but it's not. It, it's just different attachments. So this is, um, something you can purchase separately, of course, you know, because they can make more money that way, um, to use with this, um, fermenter. Uh, I'm trying to think of what it's called. I'll put a link as well in the um, description, but it's a, uh, I think it's called a fermentation or a pressure, pressure fermentation kit. Um, by the way, this is less expensive also than buying an actual uh, keg because you'd also have to buy um, something to go with it to use with the keg. Wow, this tubing, I mean, it'll be fine, but... They sure did. So this, uh, I'm sure that you guys are familiar with this. Maybe. Maybe yes, maybe no. This is a uh, floating dip tube. That way, well, I'll show you here in just a second. Um, what exactly, maybe I can put it together. I, I, used, I used one of these in my keg, and I love it. Uh, you have this little uh, metal ball that's just a floating ball. 
you put your tubing on one end and um, sometimes you have to heat up your tubing a little bit to get it on like this one went on but it may not like I like it to go all the way down so I'll probably end up taking it off so I can really push it down closer uh, I get nervous that it's gonna come off if I don't well actually it's going on slowly but surely so I won't I won't bore you on the video with that but basically this goes into the fermenter here now this is made for a larger size fermenter so I'm gonna have to cut some of this so it's not so long but it sits on the bottom and then and then what happens is when you fill it up it's going to float right it's going to float up here and it will end up sort of sitting like this and so what will happen is it will end up pulling the beer from just under the surface so that you don't get it'll stay away from all the yeast and stuff that floats to the bottom so that's why you you can use that to uh really get your beer pulled really easily without all the extra junk. So what was I going to tell you? Um, so I think that there'd be no reason that you couldn't just take this and immediately put it into your keg and use it as a keg. Um, there are people that will poo poo that and say, no, no, you don't want to do that because uh, you're going to get off flavors if you leave the, the, you know, beer sitting on the yeast cake. Um, my experience, you know, I've been brewing for a long time. And my experience is that that takes a very long time to happen. What do I mean by long time? I mean, I've left wine for a year sitting on its yeast cake. Probably I shouldn't have left it quite that long. But I'm just saying it takes a long time and I think it's pretty rare uh, you know, if you're going to leave it for that long, it is a good idea to, to move it into a secondary and take it off the yeast cake. Um, oh man, my battery's dying. Hold that thought. A couple of dead batteries there. Uh, it looks like my record, my sound recorded though, up until the end there. So where was I? So this kit comes with the floating dip tube. And then I, I said, you're not going to use uh, airlock. Um, so you're going to, I believe, take these tops off. Um, that's why there's a lid for that one. Uh, and these should be, let's see, these should be interchangeable by the looks of it. I don't think it matters which is which. Um, these are, uh, I, I'm hoping these are for ball lock. Because that's the kind of connectors that I have on my keg. Um, so, you put those on your, um, you stick the tube up one of these uh, sides for the floating dip tube. So, your, your gas would go on one side, your liquid would go here, and then you could transfer from here and it would pull like I say, from the top of the beer instead of the bottom because of that floater. Um, and I'm going to stop the video for a second and I will come back when the next piece of this arrives because I remember I was telling you, you don't use an airlock on this because you want to actually capture a certain amount of pressure. Well, that requires something other than this airlock so that you can actually control the pressure. So. I'll be back in a moment with uh, that device and I can unbox it and then I can show you the whole shebang. All right, so uh, I've finally got in the last piece here. So let's unbox that. I've got a couple of things, um, <laughs> newspaper, uh, that I ordered. Not all of it is for this video. So we'll see what I've got. Uh, I don't even know what this is. Oh, yeah, this is what I need. Uh, was there anything else for this video? Not really. None of the other stuff uh, is for this video. <laughs> it's grain and, and, and uh, brew basket stuff. Anyway, this is what I was waiting for. This is called a spunding valve. And uh, let's see if I can hold it up. To the camera so this replaces the airlock when you're doing pressure fermentation 
and it should look very similar to what you would use on the back of your kegerator, like on your CO2. So you have a regulator here. So on the regulator, you may notice it goes to 15 PSI. So it doesn't go as high as other things. Um, so in this case, uh, I think you can get spunding valves that will go like to higher pressure. But in my case, I don't have any intention of using this to do a higher pressure than about 15 uh, PSI. That'll work just fine for carbonating. So there is, um, you know, I've, I just unboxed this, so I don't have the like directions, but I do know you can adjust it. Now I see there's a little uh, uh, piece here that unscrews, and I'm assuming that will allow me to adjust the pressure. So the idea is, because I'm looking at this, everything else seems pretty tight uh, and unmovable. Even the, I know this, this is somewhat removable. I was going to say it should be. Um, yeah, so I guess it's just this little piece on the end. So what you do is I've got this put together now uh, with the handles and everything on it. Uh, I believe you can get like a carry case that goes all the way around the bottom so you can pick up the whole thing with a base. But you can see I've trimmed my um, um, floating dip tube uh, to better fit. And that's on this side. That's the liquid side. So what you would do is you would fill this up with your fermentation and then give it like a few hours to really start going. Once you see it like foaming and, and, and going, then you put this valve, just like you would on anything else, on there. Now I don't know if this is, it's not really mo very movable. I might have to try to play with that and see if I can get it to, because I would rather, it'd be a lot easier if I could read this. I don't know. Anyway, what you do is you put that on there and as the pressure builds, you can uh, use this little thing on the end and turn it to adjust the amount of pressure. So just like you would on your kegerator, sorry, I don't have anything in this, so of course it's going to fall everywhere. But just as you would on your kegerator, you set the pressure and it will just, it has a diaphragm. It's going to release any excess and it will just keep it. So if I set it to 10 PSI, it will hold 10 PSI pressure during the whole fermentation. So when it's done fermenting, the, the wort, which is now beer, will be carbonated already. And um, I can just take this whole thing and put it, and I could literally take this off, put my gas line on from the keg, and immediately start pouring once it's cold. Uh, I probably won't. I'll still give it a week. But uh, it's kind of exciting that that's even an option. Yeah, so... Um, I'll have to look into whether I can get this to turn a little bit more. I guess it's mostly this that's turning. Anyway, I'm going to play around with it, see if I can get a better angle for, the, for it. That's not too bad, actually. Um, but that's it. That's what I've got for pressure fermentation. So the next brew video will not be pressure fermented because it's already done. And I'm just waiting for the beer to carbonate. So it will be the one after that. Uh, that will be done in this and will be my first try at pressure fermentation. So there you go. We'll give that a try. All the cool kids are doing it and uh, see how it goes. Anyway, I hope that helped. If you're uh, looking into it, doing the same kind of thing I'm doing and you're wanting to make that leap into pressure fermentation, um, I think that this is the least expensive way to do it and uh, time will tell how well this lasts and how well it works. So I will see you again soon uh, next Monday because that's when I always put my videos out. And until then, happy pressure fermentation.